What's going on guys, Bengal again here, back on Giants Franchise. Week 13, hyped this up a little bit in the previous episode, but it is a tough one potentially with the 8-3 LA Chargers, 87 overall team with an 89 offense, the same as ours, but an 85 overall defense. Not too shabby either. Their rankings are quite good. The number six overall offense, but the number four defense. So this could be a really tough team. And uh, shout out CJ Smalls in the last episode with the $100 donation. And it wasn't even something we can act on right now. Talking more about um, getting a mock draft onto the screen during the actual draft, which is something I never even thought about, which is actually a very good idea. So that might be true for future drafts throughout Bengals series. Who knows? But we have this unstoppable force and that's what the chargers appear to be right now so where do we start with stopping them we haven't been able to stuff the run forcing turnovers is maybe our best shot we know we're not going to get pressure but you have to force turnovers and take the football away it either helps keeps points off the board for them and he said something else too but we got to beat the chargers and force two plus turnovers in order to achieve that goal it's not going to be easy this is a really really talented team and we still are not at full strength if you check out our injury report we are still without jeffrey simmons we are still without caleb claiborne who is out for the next couple of weeks jalen waddle still taking his time not going to place him on ir we just don't need the roster spot that badly but we'll hope that he comes back come playoff time and can be very good, very productive. But you know who was productive most recently? That was Orlando Yarborough. Someone who I really didn't expect to play much of an impact, but the rookie from Clemson showcased his excellent speed and burst and the ability to get after the quarterback and recorded a sack or two. I think only one, but very, very good performance. I was impressed. And that's right, their starting quarterback is no longer Justin Herbert. It's former top pick of the Chargers. First rounder, I was going to say top 10, but he actually might have gone in the teens or the 20s. Joe Trent, superstar development, could be the real deal. If you don't know about Vessi, you're going to want to listen up because this sneaker could potentially change your life. And I really do mean that. And why could it be life-changing? Well, I'm sure we've all struggled at times with, okay, it's the end of winter going into spring. Is it going to rain? Is there snow on the ground? Well, this is a weatherproof shoe, the Vessi Stormburst, and it pretty much cancels out any of the what should I wear questions because this is going to keep you perfectly dry and comfortable. These are as waterproof as shoes get, and that is because they are 100% waterproof. They are made of Dymatex, and even though you wouldn't see from feeling or seeing this shoe, it's so light, you wouldn't think that it's waterproof, but it is. I'll pop some B-roll on the screen so you can see here. These will keep you completely dry. They're so comfortable, and with the dual climate knit material Dymatex, it's gonna keep you cool in the summer and warm in colder weather. It really doesn't feel like it should be waterproof, but it is. I really think this is the perfect winter slash spring cold shoe, and they are breathable in the summer, but they are especially warm in the winter and kind of that early spring. They've got this really grippy rubber outsole too, so you're not really gonna be slipping at all. So I live in Houston. If you didn't know, it rains here pretty consistently. So these are kind of the perfect shoe to wear for that weather if you're not sure if it's gonna rain or not. And in Houston, that's kind of like everyday life. These are absolutely perfect to throw on. I don't need to worry about Oh no, am I going to ruin my shoes because I just have these on? They're waterproof and they're good to go. So if you like to do a lot of outdoor activities or ever be alive and outside when it rains, <laughs> Vessies are the absolute way to go. I think that should probably apply to a lot of you guys. So check out the Vessi Stormburst and other styles available at Vessi.com slash Bengal. You guys know that, B-E-N-G-A-L. Get your Vessi sneaker and size you want now and use code Bengal for 15% off your entire order. Ooh, and we're going over the little, like, reflecting pond there at SoFi Stadium as we head to L.A. Nick Duvall is unbelievable. A little over 1,200 yards receiving this year. 15 touchdowns. He is a menace and basically uncoverable. He might record a 20-touchdown season. It's possible. 
Now, only two players have recorded more than 20 touchdowns in a season as a receiver. Randy Moss in 2007 on those unbelievable Patriots at lost to. Nope, other side, the New York Giants, but also Saquon's up there. Uh, was not on the team, obviously. But Randy Moss on the 07 Patriots had 23, and Jerry Rice on the 1987 49ers had 22. The highest from a tight end is Rob Gronkowski, who had 17 in 2011. And then the next highest is 18 by a few players, including Devontae Adams, Mark Clayton, and we'll say all of them, Sterling Sharp. But only two players have even had 19 or more touchdowns in a year. And we're hoping Nick Duvall can join that elusive club. And we'll see the offense take the field first. Greg Sheldon back to return. And he's off to the races, to the 23. Cody Bailey's been playing some incredible football of late. And so is Saquon Barkley, to be honest. And that's a really great way to start this game. I will mention, I'm just remembering it, but I made a change. With Jalen Waddle injured, I referred to the comment section, and you'll see a lot more of 87 in this game. And why are we seeing more 87? Well, because Nick Duvall has been moved to the slot. We're going to see how this goes today. I'm not saying it's going to be a permanent fixture, but getting him the football is a really, really good recipe for success on our offense. He's got the slot omatic ability as well. I don't know if I love him as the every down slot, but he'll certainly be out there sometimes at the very least as we'll throw a quick RPO to Larry Smith. Not a bad play. You know the Giants offense, but we'll meet the Chargers defense. And it doesn't mean that Nick Duvall is not going to play tight end anymore. It, he was still will, but it's going to be, at least for this game, we're going to try it out. He's not going to be in line as much. Sebastian Joseph Day at left end. This is a 3-4 defense. I would take it. So Sebastian Joseph Day is going to be listed at end. Bosa and Mack are going to be the outside linebackers with rookie DeAndre Noel. 6'6", six, six, only 269 as their nose tackle. A little bit bizarre. Or actually, I misread that. That's right end. Okay, so that makes a little bit more sense. Defensive tackle Devon Hamilton and Jazario Garland. Jazario, wow. I do feel like I remember seeing that now. That's a crazy name. Joey Bosa starts at left outside linebacker with Patrick Queen and Kenneth Murray up the middle. Two very athletic Inside linebackers, Khalil Mack off the right edge. Corners, J.C. Jackson, Asante Samuel Jr., and Trayvon Winston. And their free safeties, former first-round pick of the Bengals, Daxton Hill. J.T. Woods in behind. And strong safety is now two-year starter, Malcolm Chambers. 92 speed, 84 overall safety. Not too bad. And we will see Nick Duvall go back in line here. Two tight end set. Rhodes just offset. And we'll see if we can work off play action. And we'll see how successful this is. We're going to throw it deep and just out of bounds. Nothing really came open on that zone coverage. They just played it pretty conservatively and it worked out. Now we have third and four. I would call this four down territory. So we are going to run the football here. Move some guys around. And get ready to run right at... Is that Kenneth Murray? It looks like Patrick Queen, and he's blocked off. And another good block from Kadarius Tony and Larry Smith comboing there. Sets up Saquon Barkley for the first down. Would have been nice to get a touchdown on that. It seemed like we would have had an opportunity based on Larry Smith getting up there, but just tracked down from behind. Never really cleaned up and opened up as much as we wanted it to. But a very good result as we force another set. Fresh set of downs, and we're sacked. Kenneth Murray. Gets in there. Would love to diagnose what happened on that play. Felt like we got brought down instantly. Kenneth Murray just screaming right up the middle. Chargers sent heat, and I did not see it. Second and 16. We'll try a screen. They're all over it. And weird catch animation, and we are tackled for a loss. We'll take one Barkley. Third and 21 now. Not what we want. Now, I will say... The big negative to putting Nick Duval in the slot is he doesn't have a mismatch quite so frequently. So whereas Jaden Rhodes could dominate in that spot, as we're going to throw it to Duval anyway, it's a nice catch. But uh, we just we don't have the same favorable matchup. Him lined up against a linebacker or maybe even a safety sometimes. It's a nice catch. It's a nice play. Uh, but we're we're going to bring out Wyatt Anthony indoors here. Bring on the field goal team. 
and see if Anthony can drill this one. Should be able to, and it is right down the middle. 3 nothing Giants. You know, an interesting start here. Not exactly the start I would have liked. Trying out some new things, which, you know, you might say it's a little bit late in the season to do that, but at the same time, we're looking to see what we have for the playoffs. Maybe Nick Duval in the slot is going to be unbelievable. But another counterpoint is he's already been unbelievable. And, and we'll meet the Charger offense, led by young quarterback Joe Trent, 6'1", 211, with Austin Eckler in the backfield. Alec Ingold, we might see sparingly. Receiving core is very good. Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, Brandon Ayuk, and then Stefan Mann. We'll see a little bit, maybe some DeAndre Johnson. Not a fast receiving core but a big one. Max Williams, but not that Max Williams in a tight end, a different one with great speed, 87 speed at six foot four, 237. Might see a little Gerald Everett today too. And their offensive line is pretty good. Rashawn Slater, young left guard, Brandon Dawson, Corey Lindsley signed a big deal in real life, Zion Johnson and Lael Collins up to a 90 overall. It is a very talented offensive line, even better than I expected. Micah McFadden into the game. Never that good of a thing. As he is trucked over by Austin Eckler. That's a 14-yard pickup for Eckler. Oh, this is not looking good already. The momentum gains. Home team gains extra momentum for yards gained. Home team can or players cannot be knocked out of the zone. And the away team quarterback is basically screwed. It's something it said something like that. We'll get another look at it in a moment. As Trent's first pass is complete to the back for eight. Away team quarterback periodically has trouble seeing receivers. So we have to limit how much momentum they get. But for every yard that they get, they get more and more and more momentum. So it's going to be very easy for them to put us in a bad spot. First and 10 from the 35. Playing a little zone defense there, but can't cover everybody. Little blitz on second and inches. We'll see how it works. It's going to be play action going toward the end zone. It's caught, but actually broken up by McKinney coming in late. There is a flag. Hoping for a holding here. It's not going to be one. Roughing the passer on Aziz Ojolari. And it is now first and 10 for the Chargers on our own 13. Not good. Defense needs to step up here and do it in a hurry. Glenn Gore juked out. Cooper trying to bring down Eckler. Manages to, but it's another nice gain for the Chargers. Second and five now as they improve to the eight-yard line. And this could be a run. Multiple tight ends in the game. And it will be a run. We're right there. And Dontrell Cobb wrestles down. Eckler will be a big third down and three. I think we can commit to a pass here. See if that comes back to bite us. No, it is a pass. And under pressure is Trent, Kayvon Thibodeau, making a huge play. And honestly, I think Trent ran into that one himself. I think that was less of Kayvon Thibodeau making a great play against Al Collins and more so Trent panicking with the pressure from 92 and just running right into Thibodeau, who uses some great hand strength to bring him down. Larry Ogunjobi making it happen on that one. Also, I did not realize Larry Ogunjobi is wearing Michael Strahan's 92. Little bit of an oversight there. Almost as bad as Greg Sheldon wearing Kenny Galladay's 19. Big number there. Kenny Galladay cut in real life. Yeah, seemed like that's about right. Working off play action. Quick release to Duvall. Would have been a really nice time to break a tackle there. Nothing but space beyond that. Uh, and unfortunately, they were in man coverage. Otherwise, that would have been a massive gain. Would have been a huge play. Is this a blitz? We're going to get it out quickly again. It's Nick Duvall. Pretty good speed from Duvall for a tight end, as we know. And he has been the recipient of a lot of targets already. And that is the end of the first quarter after a seven-yard Saquon Barkley run. Very close game so far. In fact, it's actually tied 3-3. Three to three. About as close as that can get. And I'm sure, based on history... We're going to put up a lot of points in the second quarter, or at least a lot of points will be scored in this quarter period, hopefully mostly by us, but you never know. But if they can't stop the run game, it's going to be a long day for them. And right now, that's one of their best plays of the game, and it went for three or four. Oh, wow. All right. Zach Beck just not quite quick enough to hit the hole on that. 
A little bit unfortunate there because I think that's probably a first down with Saquon Barkley who comes back into the game on third down and four. Going to go right underneath to Larry Smith. So much speed from number three. Live it like Larry. First down. We are into the green zone now. 27-yard line. Weathersby into the game in the slot as well. We're going to throw it to him quickly. Let's go, Kendall. Easy first down. He's been actually finding the end zone quite a bit in recent weeks as well. He's really making a living down here in the red zone, which is a little bit unusual. We drafted him as a deep threat, but has found the end zone, I would say, more so in the you know, short and intermediate ranges and just managed to find uh, the end zone for six as Jaden Rhodes, big number 87, uncovered. Gonna have to figure that out. His first touchdown in a while. It might be years on Jaden Rhodes there. At least one, I would guess. Maybe he scored this year, but I don't think so. Jaden Rhodes finds the end zone. I mean, just completely uncovered. Maybe Nick Duvall in the slot is going to open up Jaden Rhodes for more opportunities. But we know Jaden Rhodes loves to drop the football. So, I don't know. All it might take is one drop from Rhodes before Duvall takes over. All right, out of the slot, back to primary tight end. And we'll bring on Kendall Weathersby, who really has played well enough to earn more playing time. That's no good. We got to wrap up on that. Oh, my goodness. We tried to. Didn't even go for a hit stick like usual. Maybe should have cut him down. It's a massive gain. That is the speed from their tight end, Max Williams. And that is not what I like to see. Not at all. We get to John Bost here. What are they doing? Third and three from the 45. Probably not four down territory for the Chargers, although it should be, but it won't be because Keenan Allen converts. Oh, we got to get to him on this. Thibodeau completely unblocked, and we sent heat there, so somebody should have been. Thibodeau with his second sack of the game. It's only the second quarter. Trent that time, roll out, play action, boot. Found number five. No good for Joe Trent. Thibodeau's actually in the zone. We're going to let him blitz instead of Aziz Ojolari, who's going to drop back into coverage. Second down and 20. This is where we got to take advantage. And that's not how we do it. Quick throw, missed tackle, big game. And Thibodeau's out of the zone, just like that. Useless, dude. Useless ability. Third and four. Trent going to get sacked. This time it's Aziz Ojolari. Thought we'd get no pressure today, like always. And against this offensive line, surely you'd think that. But Aziz Ojolari just wins there, and Trent holds onto the ball a little bit too long. But I think all three of these sacks have been as a result of him getting too wide from the pocket. And we are taking full advantage of it. Need our offense to capitalize on that mistake. Okay, we are actually super backed up here after a punt. That is not good. We go RPO. Saquon gets it. Anything to get, you know, not into our own end zone, we would have taken there. So three yards is fine. Not amazing, but fine. Second and seven. Back to Barkley. Got a few again. It's going to be third and manageable. We're going to start Nick Duvall as our primary tight end here. Converted on this play earlier to Weathersby. Let's see if they pick it up and leave Duvall. It's exactly what happened. Oh, Nick Duvall still fighting. That feels like a late hit. Also, what's interesting about this play is usually we'd have a big-time speed threat in that slot for the fade, but now it's Nick Duvall, who doesn't exactly offer as much speed, although we're going to test it, and it's going to be a jump ball. He can't come down with it. That's a two-minute warning. Yeah, I don't know. I wish we could say, okay, Nick Duvall is a slot receiver in you know, situations X, Y, and Z, but there are often times where I really would like a speed receiver and he's in the slot instead. And that would have been prime opportunity for Nick Duvall, but instead Jaden Rhodes, again, the beneficiary of Nick Duvall moving over. Stepping up with Bailey, good block from Duvall, just slide, Cody, we tried to. But Vanilla Vic off to the races. Said I'm getting 19 yards. I'm not going down for anything. No free plays. All right, I can respect it as long as you don't fumble the ball. Go for Barkley. Make a play, Saquon. We're going to call a timeout. Over the middle, there's Larry Smith with enough, enough space. Going to call another timeout with 29 seconds now. And Cody Bailey's actually in the zone. 
So he'll be able to throw in some really, really high velo passes here. We're going to throw it up. Nope. Got it away. Second and 20. He's going to check down there for Jaden Rhodes. Get out of bounds. Box stops at 19 seconds. It'll be third down and one. 19 seconds to go here in the first half. He's come away with a touchdown. And we're sacked. Uh, just couldn't... Couldn't find it. Was waiting for somebody to separate. The routes were too long to develop. And, uh, of course, sacked. And we'll call a timeout here with three seconds to go. Put up a field goal before the end of the half. Uh, the Chargers will get the football to start the third quarter. At least we're up in the game. It's a two-possession game. Don't mind it. Just... I think the results could have been better. I think I'm going to move Nick Duvall out of that slot role. Now, sometimes he moves to the slot anyway... But I, I like it more when it, it feels a bit more natural, where right now it feels a little bit more forced. Don't prefer that. And we are underway for the start of the second half. Chargers looking to get back in this one. Only down by 10, but we need to play good defense and extend that lead. Their offense at times has looked very hard to stop, but similarly to the Bills game, which you guys wouldn't have seen, unfortunately, uh, their offense really hasn't looked so bad. They just have not been able to score points for one reason or another. And Joe Trent going to run into another sack. Kayvon Thibodeau with the three-piece. Where's the biscuit? Thibodeau, third sack in just three quarters. And we have a whole lot of third quarter to go. And, you know, sometimes when we smell blood in the water, we like to really get after it, send more and more heat. Trent with just a push pass to the sideline. I thought Eckler was surely going to step out of bounds, but manages to tiptoe stay in and extend that play, picking up a ton of yards in the process. Didn't really even bother playing defense because usually that animation just takes him out of bounds. Didn't hear. Forcing an incompletion there on third down. That was huge. Good blitz, good result. Chargers again will punt. Cody Bailey actually staying in the zone here to start the second half. Love to see it. And thought for sure Kadarius Tony was going to pick up a block there. He chose not to. And instead of getting like 10 yards, we get zero. One-on-one -on -one for Duvall. Oh. Cody Bailey. Uh, airmail. That one. Okay. Under pressure, I guess. I don't know what that was. It is third and 10 now. You'll notice that Larry Smith has moved to the slot. Duvall back to a more... I would say natural inline roll, and we're going to throw it to him. He's wide open. Nick Duvall, big time conversion. Maybe had Larry Smith as well. I thought it was going to be a little bit tougher of a throw. End up just being patient, waiting for Duvall to get past the coverage, and we take full advantage. Go Saquon, good run. Tight end screen. Yeah, not that good, huh? We're, I don't know if we were too quick to throw that or not quick enough I think probably too quick he might have settled down and maybe would have been a more favorable result for us I'm not totally sure I'm gonna throw for Tony that's a really nice throw you see him change the arm slot and the angle and get it to Tony there who ran a pretty good route and it's third and two this is read option who do they commit to stopping Cody Bailey and they let Saquon Barkley just rumble up the middle for the first down. It was way too easy. They blitzed, to be fair. So things might have been a little bit out of whack. Not expecting read option working out of the gun. But it's something we'll try, you know, maybe, maybe once a game, once every other game or so. Now, they're bringing a safety up. I don't know if this draw is a good idea. Tried to juke into the space. Lose a couple. Third and four. Third and four. I feel like these routes are going to take too long to develop. A little bit afraid of that. We're throwing it up. One-on-one. -on -one. Duvall can't come down with it. Felt like that was our best chance. But again, in the end zone, we come up short. Wyatt Anthony's kick is good. 16-13 Giants. It's a run. It's play action. We commit too hard, but it's only a check down. Nice enough solo tackle. Third and one. Derek Cooper playing off the ball here. A little bit peculiar. Is it Wham? Cooper into the backfield. Big hit. Can't bring him down. And it's Orlando Yarbrough, the rookie. That secures that tackle for loss. But Derek Cooper making it all happen. Popping Eckler in the backfield. Great contact balance from number 30 there. Staying on his feet. 
We were looking for the fumble, of course, but a great play nonetheless. Yarbrough with the cleanup offense back out onto the field. This is a dominant performance from our defense today. Haven't really forced the turnovers like we were looking for, but our pressure has been unbelievable. And full momentum. Oh, oh, it's away team players cannot be knocked out of the zone. That's actually huge. If we can keep momentum and get Nick Duval in the zone, get Kayvon Thibodeau in the zone, get some of these corners in the zone even, but it, it more likely Thibodeau, we could become unstoppable. Larry Smith, just go down, please. No fumbles. You know, I almost think of Saquon Barkley as a superstar X Factor in this series, but he hasn't been. He's never been great at that high. I think we got him, and he was uh, only star dev to start the year, which is understandable based off of the previous couple of seasons played by injury. But clearly, you know, as close to a superstar X Factor as you can get from somebody with, with uh, only star dev. Is that pass is batted at the line. Third and eight. Who wants to make a play? I mean, Duvall, super open. It was zone coverage, though. So that I jumped the gun there. That should not have been the read. Should not have been the throw. Just got too antsy, looking to get rid of the football quickly. Didn't really realize what we were looking at. And this is one of our first punts in a minute. And in case you forgot, yes, I am still the best punter on YouTube. Offense, not good. Defense, questionable at best. Punting game, strong as ever. This is actually where we usually get killed. I feel like we get killed, like always, always in these spots. Is it because we're too aggressive? Eckler, off to the races, down the sideline. Holmes touches him. Big hit from Boss after Gore slowed him down. Dude, and also Darnay Holmes cut off Glenn Gore, who was definitely gonna be able to make the tackle earlier. It's a massive gain. Punt erased. I don't know how we always get crushed in those spots. I think it's just being too aggressive off to the side. McKinney, take it away. Good coverage, at least. I think we get too aggressive trying to send blitzers off the edge, and we don't account for up the middle. But that's actually not even true all the time. I don't know. We just get crushed in those spots. It's kind of brutal. Check down. Nice hit. That'll be the end of the third quarter. LA knocking on the door after a huge play. They were backed up to their own end zone, and suddenly we are backed up to our own end zone. From the 20, going from the gun. Let's guess pass here. Should get a bit more of a rush. That's good coverage. Trent going to take off. He's got space. No reaction time for McKinney. He can't bring Trent down, and Trent has found the end zone. He can't believe it either. What? What is that? And he just fisted me. Ah, jeez. Dude, that's BS. I sent a Dory Jackson on that, but Trent was already way too far past him. McKinney one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, that's a quarterback. You got to fumble. You know how many times I fumbled because somebody sneezed on Cody Bailey? It's a touchdown game. Less than that, even. Well, exactly that. It's six points, but, you know, you know what I'm saying. A touchdown and an extra point would give them the lead, but a field goal won't do. So it's a touchdown game, but also it isn't. You know what I mean? We need points is what I'm saying. Let's go out there. Let's make it happen. Lower scoring game than we've been used to in recent weeks, and Sheldon almost had it. Sheldon almost found the crease. Third and seven, Bailey knocked out of the game. Another incompletion knocked down at the line. I feel like those actually don't happen very often. Quick check down to Smith. That's a first. That was huge. Try this screen again. Um... It just might be a bad play. I feel like we've seen it be successful sometimes, but not today, that's for sure. I don't actually know if I love read option here. See how it works. They just, again, do not account for Saquon Barkley, but they get saved. Third and five. Who wants to make a play? Larry Smith? We lobbed it to him. That is unbelievably tight coverage from 15, who looked like he was lost. How do you make this play? 15, first of all, if, if, if that was my player, by the way, two Giants guys knocking into each other, 15 is on the ground or in another a zip code. The fact that he's able to stick like glue past two different defenders is wild. I choose to throw the ball right here after he gets knocked. I don't know how he's able to stick with that. I mean, that's the best coverage I've ever seen. We'll punt again. Another good-looking punt here. Back to the four. 
I am consistent. Brock Cook pins the Chargers inside the five. We are going to take a different approach here and play it very conservatively. No blitzes. Just plug up the middle and make a stop. It's a fullback dive. Dude, how is our defense so bad in these spots? It's Alec Ingold. I might have pulled Dontrell Cobb out of the way. That could have happened. Maybe I'm not playing my right gap responsibility. Certainly a lot of different variables in there. All right, we're getting heat back on the quarterback. He's going to make a mistake. We're overloading the right side. It's a run. That's a good tackle from Aziz. Seven rushes for 100 yards. That's not good. Zero takeaways today, too. How would we have known that? Maybe down the stretch we'll see a couple mistakes. We can only hope. We're going to show heat again. But it's McKinney who's coming on the blitz. Trent, under pressure, there's a turnover! I think Ojolari punched the football out and Lawrence recovered. That's the big mistake we were looking for. Who got pressure? It was Orlando Yarbrough! This guy's unbelievable. The rookie has played in two career games. This is the second one, has two career sacks now. As a D-tackle, a forced fumble... And he's a fourth quarter player. Both sacks came in the fourth quarter. Both were at critical points in the game. Orlando Yarbrough can play, man. The, the dude is a ball player. Stepping up with Bailey. Just slide. Just slide. More running than we usually do with him in this game. And that's, it's only been twice. But I think we've taken advantage and run when we've needed to. Third down and three. Barkley will get the give. Looking for space. Patient from Saquon Barkley. And that is another first down. No matter what here, we cannot afford to turn over the ball. Any type of points makes this a two-possession game. Which is obviously the goal. And we throw it away. It's third and nine. Simple. Who wants to make a play? Somebody wants to. Duval! Meet him in the hole! Nick Duvall, one-on-one -on -one with Derwin James, and it's the Gronk Spike from Nick Duvall. Going to change the name of that pretty soon. Look at that. Met him right at the point of contact. Oh, it's not Derwin James. He plays on the Eagles now. But they had, they do have a superstar safety back there. That's, oh yeah, that's just their young guy. They're, he just happens to also be a superstar. Or actually, Derwin James might be X-Factor. Okay. Kind of forgot. And another pass batted down at the line. So strange. It's 22 to 10. 12 point lead here late in the game. Bit of an odd one. Bit of an odd one. Yep. I don't know what that is for me. All around terrible. Throwing for content? I wish. We're going for the strip at that point. It's a 75 yard Chargers touchdown. Uh, we were in man coverage with Dontrell Cobb, and I forgot. Ball got snapped, wiped my brain. I had no idea what was happening, but I realized that it had to have been the case. I then switched on with Glenn Gore in the open field. What a disaster that was. And then, of course, we couldn't tackle him, going for the strip and whatnot. I am bad. That's what it is. Bad at the game. Ooh, that was almost fancy. And our starting center's injured. Eric McCoy taking a knee. Just when we want to run. And that's also a timeout, by the way. So the clock has stopped. And we have a just bad center into the game now. Larry Smith, though, is speed. That's a nice play. Ruse ribs. Well, Minshew's going to come into the game. Greg Minshew. Now, he is a pass block specialist. Run blocking is not so good. That's dead eye. That's not dead eye. That's not an accurate ball. That missed. How can that be dead eye when it's overthrown? Why is the clock stopped? I just ran the ball for three yards, or for however many yards, third and three. No one has called a timeout, and the clock is not moving. Why is that? Nick Duvall, first down. We didn't go out of bounds either. I don't know why the clock stopped. Makes no sense. And that's a two-minute warning. They're catching every break they can. There wasn't a penalty either. There was no reason for the clock to stop, yet it did. The game, I feel like, wants the Chargers to win so badly. 
they have momentum somehow. I guess it did have a huge play. All right, I guess I forgot about that. Saquon, just go down, Saquon. Timeout LA. This one might be about over. Oh, we got blocks. Larry Smith, good block. Barkley with a stiff arm. Final timeout called by LA. Not good for the Chargers. And we can just kneel it out. Yeah, it'd be tight, but I think we could do it. We're gonna, we're gonna run though. And of course we get an injury. It's our other center, Greg Minshew. Minshew. So now Joshua Zudu's in at center. That of course stopped the clock. <laughs> Unbelievable. PCL sprain, sick. Awesome. Now it's third and eight. Dude, I'm just, I'm just trying to play a little bit more offense today. It's BS. Give me Duval. Game over. Thanks for playing. And Barkley, as time expires. Oh, what am I going to need the ball? I was disrespected this game. We're making a statement. Saquon dancing with triple zeros on the clock. Love to see it. And that is your final. No extra point needed. 28-17. Game over. Giants win. Interesting game. Interesting game. I, unusual compared to what we've seen, I would say, recently, right? But Cody Bailey still played pretty well. 25-35 for 232. Two touchdowns, no picks. Uh, only one turnover for the boys. But Saquon Barkley, 29 attempts is just too many for 145 and a touchdown. But good game from him. Of course, garbage time TD, whatever. I don't even want to talk about what we allow on the ground. It's embarrassing. I got to figure it out. And then receiving Nick Duvall, of course, 12 catches for 109 yards and a touchdown. He's pretty good. <laughs> Larry Smith, 6 for 55, 3 for 40 for Jaden Rhodes, including that touchdown. One of his best games in a, in a minute. Uh, Kadarius, Tony, and Weathersby both with one catch for 10 or more yards. And then defensively, man, Orlando Yarbrough. That's my guy right there. But Kayvon Thibodeau started the show. Three tackles for loss on the three sacks. Sack for Yarbrough, one for Ojolari, no picks as we know, uh, but a big force fumble for Orlando Yarbrough. Lawrence recovered, and that is the Clemson combo, right? I think, yeah, Yarbrough is Clemson, obviously would have never played together for a couple of reasons. The biggest being that Yarbrough doesn't exist, but the second most being that Lawrence's experience is six years in the league, whereas Orlando Yarbrough is a rookie. But fun game. Great result. We're going to improve our record, and that's all we can ask for. Really wish we would have picked the sack option. But turnovers were a hot topic this week, and despite not having as many as you hoped for, the consolation is getting the victory anyway. I wouldn't say that's a consolation prize. That is that is the goal. Uh, the turnovers would have been a nice consolation prize if we had lost, say. But no, we, we wanted to win. They're great offense, and it's hard to force them into mistakes. Regardless, we get 1,000 XP for all players. It's not huge, but it's also not insignificant. It's going to get a couple of guys closer uh, going into the bye. And we got a really, really late bye week here, and I'm actually all for it. Because what that does, that gives us a little bit of time to rest up here before a couple of important games. Jalen Waddle that much closer to being back. Caleb Claiborne will be back for next game. Jeffrey Simmons will return for next game as well. That's a big one against Philadelphia. And Jalen Waddle will be back for uh, the playoffs, which is awesome, which we are on track to make at 9-4. and four. Cowboys not too far behind at 7-5. and five. And I think we'll end this episode with some upgrades. Got some big ones. Nick Duvall going to move up to a 90 overall vertical threat before you know it. Right now, he's going to jump up to an 89. And oh my goodness. Plus one awareness, plus one catch and traffic, plus one deep route running, plus three medium, and plus one speed. 88 speed now for Duvall. Love that. Medium route runnings into the 80s. Clearly at this point, he's receiving a slight boost, but plus three is pretty awesome on that as he is so close to getting new abilities. I think I will take off Slotomatic and give him something else. I like tight end apprentice. Mid out elite could be cool. Short in elite could be cool. Unfortunately, can't get route tech until he's a 90 overall vertical threat. And at that point, he's going to be like one of the best in the league if he's not already in that conversation. Xavier McKinney, 
Just a little bit slow. I think 90 plus zone coverage would be really nice. So we're gonna go and try boost him into that range. Show me plus two. Plus one zone covered gets him at least to a 90. So we'll take that. Evan Neal, pass protector. Need him to just be better overall. Pass protector works for me. It's really an awareness boost. Don't love that. And then Kendall Weathersby can only run deep, route, uh, deep routes. I don't know what his, his role is going to be on my team at the moment, but he's got to be a little bit better in the intermediate area of the field. Going to do slot because that just could be his eventual role for us. Not sure yet, but getting medium and short route running up is definitely going to help him see the field more. And then the other upgrades really don't matter a whole lot. And I think we'll actually end this episode with the bye week. But what do we want to do for the bye week? Coach, you have to be happy heading into your bye week in first place. Any special plans for the week off? I want XP. So even with the stay grinding, taking out some stamina, we get some XP. We work towards improving these players that will be so pivotal for us in an eventual playoff run. So yeah, plus 500 XP. Holy cow. Now, is minus 7 stamina really the equivalent to plus 500 XP? That feels crazy. But week 15 for the Eagles, it's going to be a bloodbath. It's a talented team. Are they as talented as we are? I don't know. They're not doing so well at 4 and 9, but as you can tell, their offense is an 87. Defense, 84. Overall in total is an 85. That is not a 4-9 and nine team to me. That is a better than 4-9 and nine team significantly. But I guess their playbooks are bad. So they are bad. The zone coverage for Darnay is going to be the big one for me here. I'd love to get every corner to be 90-90. I know I should work on man-to-man -man and get that up. But I really, really feel like... Even though one step ahead is definitely really, really good. I feel like getting these guys more balanced is also going to be helpful, especially considering how much zone coverage we were on. It's just tough in man coverage sometimes. For Derek Cooper, I mean, he continues to improve as a player. I really like what we have, but his finesse moves just has to be higher if he's going to play more on the field. That's just what it is. Plus one finesse moves is nice. Like, he is a really awesome player. 93 speed, pretty good tackling Good hit power, good finesse moves. Just trying to get him to be better and better and better. Greg Sheldon, we're going to continue to go playmaker here. He's a return man. That's what he is. He's not really ever going to be somebody that sees the field a ton. So getting plus two juke move is nice, plus three ball carrier vision. He is a return man. Yes, medium route running is not so bad. Short route running, not awful, I guess. Like there are some things to like with him as a receiver, but let's be real, man. The whole reason that Greg Sheldon is valuable is because of what he adds in the return game and uh, getting that juke move upgraded is nice. But guys, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. That was a huge boost, by the way, from Marquis Skandrick. And I'll see you for week 15 when we take on the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm telling you, this is not going to be an easy game. That's where Derwin James plays, not in the Chargers. And I think they're going to be a lot tougher in game than they've been uh, over the course of this season. Although I think we've actually dealt with Jalen Hurts pretty easily in the past. So I don't know. But I'll see you for week 15. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.